Now, I think you're all aware, of course, that the doors out in the baptistry today are copies. The originals were taken down in 1991 for restoration. That restoration was finally completed in September of 2012, a 21-year restoration campaign on the doors. They were unveiled and put back on display in the Cathedral Museum here in Florence. They were the hottest thing in Florence, right? Entire generation of people had not seen them, so they were coming just to see the doors. And then, of course, the museum shut down a few months ago, and they thought it was a good idea to keep the doors inside while it was closed. So the bad news is you're not going to be able to see the doors while you're here. The good news? its incentive to come back to Florence, okay? Now, they're estimating that the uh, work will be completed by November of 2015, okay? So by Italian time, I'd say 2020 would be a safe time for you to come back and guarantee that you actually see those doors, right? Now, you may not know that the artist, Lorenzo Ghiberti, actually includes his own portrait in the frames. Okay, here's a close-up. Uh, Ghiberti spent 27 years of his life working on this project, okay? Um, in fact, still today, the doors represent the most expensive sculptural contract in the history of the city. They invested in the equivalent of what would be tens of millions of modern day dollars. And in fact, for those of you who know Florence well, the PT Palace, okay, the price tag on the PT when Eleonora of Toledo bought it was 9,000 gold florins. The total cost of the doors was 20,000 gold florins. Okay, it's a tremendous amount of money that they invested. Why? Okay, for the simple purpose of making the most important building in the city, the baptistry, more beautiful. Okay? And when you talk about Florence and you talk about money, one particular family immediately comes to mind, and that family is named Medici. Can I have the next? Okay? This building is the Medici Palace. Okay? This is where the Medici of the 15th century lived. And remember, those 15th century Medici, <clears throat> were what we call back in the U.S. political bosses of the city. They were not the official rulers. They just controlled the official rulers, right? Guys like Cosimo Il Vecchio de Medici, who I call the Michael Corleone of the family, right? Guys like Lorenzo Il Magnifico, who I call the JFK, right? The very charismatic figure in the kind of Camelot atmosphere that we have in Florence at the end of the 15th century. Yeah? And this building, right, which is about 150 yards north of the cathedral. So when you're looking at the Duomo, you can actually see it off to your left-hand side, was not only their home, it was also their, the world headquarters of their business. And what business were the Medici in? The Medici Bank was Europe's most important financial institution. To have it headquartered in your city would be roughly the equivalent of having the New York Stock Exchange in your city today. It made Florence the European capital of finance as well. Okay? Now think about how astute they are in using architecture as a marketing tool. I'd feel pretty safe putting my money in that bank, right? Very fortified on the outside. But if you go inside, and you can, in fact, visit the inside if you have a minute, uh, a very different style of architecture, right? Classical architecture. You can almost hear the Vivaldi music playing softly in the background, the expensive complimentary tea being served over there in the corner, because the message they're delivering is that this is one classy joint. You want your bank to be affluent and cultured as well. And if you think about it, that's what most banks still do today, right? It's almost as if the Medici wrote the book on this particular type of etiquette, right? And if you're not familiar with it, that shield up there with the balls on it, <coughs> excuse me, is the coat of arms, right? The crest of the Medici family. To see it is as good as seeing the name Medici written on something, okay? Now imagine the fabulous cocktail parties that they were throwing inside this building, right? And what were they talking about at those cocktail parties? They were talking about stuff like this. Okay. What is the most famous painting in the city of Florence? Birth of Venus. Okay. Uh, the artist, of course, Sandro Botticelli. And here's a question right off the midterm that I gave this week. I mean, don't tell my students. Don't you tell my students. What is innovative? Okay. What is new about the subject matter of this painting? Classical, <laughs> mythological, pagan, non-Christian, okay, in fact, what I won't accept is not religious because it is still religious. Now, you're all looking at me saying, so? Okay. Remember, folks, somebody walks into your house in the 1480s and sees a nude pagan goddess hanging on the wall, they just pick up the phone and call the 1-800 Inquisition hotline. <laughs> People have burned for a lot less than this kind of stuff, you follow? 
So who gets away with having paintings like this done in this city? Medici, okay? And it's not just because they're rich and powerful, it's because the Medici were bankers to the Pope himself. If they get wind that the Inquisition is snooping around, they just call the Pope directly on his personal cell phone and ask him to call the dogs off sort of thing. And remember, if you're pulling out mythology, you're opening up a Pandora's box because A, in the ancient world, nudity was celebrated. B, if you're familiar with Greek mythology, it is almost entirely erotic and sensual in nature. So this new language is going to go head to head with the morality of the church. And I think the surprising thing is that this new language is going to win. How many of you have been in the Sistine Chapel? Right? The ceiling, which is an extraordinarily beautiful work of art, and I've nicknamed it the Chip and Dale calendar, right? I mean, over 40 nude, buffy guys, you know, in all sorts of various poses in the most important chapel in the Catholic world. It's where we elect popes, you follow? Because the pope is doing what the Medici are doing. They are the leading family in Europe, and so this becomes the language of Europe's political elite. Right? Now, the story here, very simply, is, of course, how Venus was born out of the sea, emerging fully formed, transported to shore on a 